This is the Volt Bike Yukon 750. It's their 750 watt motor. Uh, it's fat bike specific. You can see it's a little bit wider and it just aligns perfectly with these fat bike rims. I love that they're punched out. Um, just gives you a little bit more cushion. It might lighten it up a little bit too. And you can see they've got a, a red liner in there. Um, this bike weighs about 62 pounds. We were weighing it earlier, 7.2 pounds on the battery. And I really like the battery integration. You know, a lot of times you'll see just like, almost like a just a box here, right? Whereas this one, it actually seats nicely into that down tube. Um, one thing I've noticed, however, is that it is a little bit loose. I was kind of surprised. I mean, it's definitely on there. To get it off, you put the key in, you twist, and you just kind of pull on this lever. Um, you don't have to take it off, thankfully. You can charge it on or off the bike. And it does have a little USB charging port on the side. And thankfully, that's, that's up pretty clear from where your legs would go. So it's not too far to get up to that cockpit area. You could charge a phone or maybe some extra lights. Um, however, you don't really need a headlight because it's already got one. It's a little bit more um, kind of minimal here. Right? It's a blaze light. I love that it runs off the main battery pack because you know you don't have to worry about uh, adding different batteries and replacing them and running out of power. You're relying on that that big capacity of this main battery pack, lithium ion. This is 48 volt, 10.4 amp hours. So you know it's it's definitely above average in terms of capacity. You should be getting at least 20 miles, and that's if you're using. Um, the, the trigger throttle. This does have trigger throttle. It also has nine levels of pedal assist. So there's a lot of, it's kind of like those finer increments. So you can just be a little bit more precise in how much you want the bike to support you. I love that it has a 12 magnet cadence sensor down here on the bottom bracket. And then they've got that nice kind of aluminum alloy bash guard in case you do encounter some, some rocks or you know other rough terrain. It's going to protect that chain a little bit. Um, however, it'd be nice if there was actually a chain a kind of like a guide so it had a plate on the other side too because I have bounced the chain off um, riding on some other bikes over the rough terrain and that's something I think about a little bit when you're going off road got these Welgo M248 DU pedals kind of basic they're the cage style platform they could be a little wider or a little larger but you know it kind of works gets the job done back here we've got a seven speed shimano tourney it's sort of the entry level in the shimano line but shimano is a recognizable company and it seems to work well enough seven speeds is is good for climbing or hitting that 20 mile per hour top speed that you'd expect they've got the sis index shifter if you're wearing gloves and you're trying to shift gears these triggers actually work pretty well because they're large and they're very separate it's not these little tiny little things that are easier to to kind of mash with your fingers. Also, just the fact that it does use a trigger versus a twist throttle. Again, it kind of keeps it separate so you can really bear down on that grip without worrying about accidentally, you know, changing how much power the bike is offering. These Artec brake levers work all right. It's mechanical brakes. Um, they do have motor inhibitors built right in. So, you know, if you get out of control or something's happening, you just squeeze those brake levers and it kills power to the motor, completely stops the system. I really like that. Um, however, the brakes themselves, they're just 160 millimeter Tektro Novella. Um, for something that's a little larger like this, you know, again, 62 pounds, the big tires, it, it's, it's a little smoother. Like the larger the disc, the, the more space there is for them to cool between where the rotor comes into contact again and just it's just like a smoother stop so i wouldn't mind seeing larger disc brakes on this but this bike isn't super expensive it's like 14.99 and shipping 70 dollars in the u.s or canada so you know that's not bad that's not bad to get this at your door it's pretty easy to set up you know it comes in a box and you just take it out and turn the handlebars and align things it's it's not it's not too much work and the frame has been optimized so it's a little bit of a lower standover height you can see how it curves down i feel like they have extra space in here because of the way the battery's set up one thing they did not take advantage of though is is adding like a bottle cage there's perfect space right here and i've seen some shops offer this like just as an aftermarket thing they can drill some holes and put some riv nuts and then you've got a bottle cage it's nice to put like a lock a mini pump things like that i do love the kickstand back here there's enough room that you can actually pedal the bike backwards without colliding with that kickstand. And it's pretty sturdy. I think it's adjustable, but I'm using a rock here to prop the bike up straight for the photos and stuff. Um, you know, and also looking at the, the tire, just getting some feedback. Um, it says five to 30 PSI, and we've really lowered the PSI. I think we're at like seven PSI right now, just kind of, 
I don't know, guessing a little bit. We've, we lowered it because we were actually riding down on the beach and having some fun out there. And it surprised me how well this actually works, how comfortable it is, especially with a suspension fork. You can see this up here. It's, it's nothing like super fancy. It's just a top gun and it doesn't even have a lockout or really much adjustment. It's probably one of their entry level, but it is wide enough for fat tires and it does definitely add some, some cushion. And one thing I don't love about this design, maybe just because I'm not like a super tall guy with long reach, is that it has a pretty long stem. Uh, and it's, you know, it's angled up a little bit and you've got a, like a very low rise on the bars, but they aren't, they aren't as up and back as I would expect. So when I'm riding and I'm actually leaning forward more and just, just the way that this bike's designed, it's a little bit more aggressive for me uh, than something that's more upright and comfortable. That's something to, to think about, you know, it already has two risers, but I would probably like get a smaller stem and maybe get like a higher, higher rise on those bars. Also, this is a Selly Royale. Fresia saddle. I haven't seen this one before and I usually like Selly Royale, but it just feels pretty firm. Um, so thankfully with the tires, with the suspension, the bike starts to soften up and I think they have like, for a hundred bucks, you can get like fenders and a rack set up. So I do like that. There's some really great options. 27.2 millimeters on that seat post. So you could always get a thud buster or a body float or something to add some more cushion and almost create that full suspension feel back up here at the cockpit we've got like a bell slash compass which is kind of cool you know it's it's a little bit unique i didn't see that a lot standard rubber grips just flat and then of course the display panel one of the things i love about how this e-bike is set up you used to have to press like power here to get the battery active and then power again up there that's no longer the case this is really just like to let you know how full the battery capacity is and if you had this off the bike and you were using it as like a backup power supply for charging a phone or something like that's awesome you get it on here all you have to do is press and hold the power button on this little remote button pad you can see this thing comes to life pretty easy to see it does swivel forward and backward to reduce glare We've got our speed up here, kilometers per hour right now. Five ticks on that battery bar. Pedal assist level, it starts at one, so it's like you're always in pedal assist. There's no throttle only mode. Uh, but then right now it's set up with nine increments. As we were saying before, there are ways to adjust this. Um, I was experimenting with it, and I think if you read the manual, you get a little bit more in depth. Trip meter, usually you press the power button up here and it gives you a little bit more. Now we're looking at average speed versus max speed. Um, and then just your actual riding speed. I'm gonna go ahead and hold that plus button for a couple seconds. You'll see the little light icon and our headlight coming to life. Loving that. That's what I was talking about before. There's no rear light, but there's plenty of room to add something of your own or maybe you get the rack or something. It's, there's, there's a lot of options to work with. Um, it's definitely nice. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that light back off, but I do wanna call attention to this button pad, this bike's been crashed like a couple times, just kind of tipped and people are learning on it and you can see that it's raised a little bit. There are different styles of button pads that are like the inset rubberized ones that seem to hold up a little bit better. This is just a point that could be more vulnerable. So keep that in mind if you're riding it. And as I mentioned earlier, just kind of the, the disc brakes, there's no slap guard on the right um, chain stay and you can already see some some kind of some nicks going on and it's just louder i hear it going like clink 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 especially over the rough terrain when you start going fast there were some potholes and erosion ruts and things out here that we were hitting before and it would be nice if this had um just you know the neoprene thing that little protector and maybe some of that was the battery rattling around so there's there's little areas where this could be improved a bit but we've taken it out there we've had fun on the beach and actually might cut to that and just show this thing in action. Okay, here we are at the beach. We got the Volt Bike Yukon 750, 750 watt motor. I'm, I'm excited to see how this thing does. I've let some of the air out, so it's, you know, it's pretty low. We might be around, uh, you know, the seven PSI level. They say five to 30, and that's just gonna give us more uh, traction. You can see I've got the cap here, and you can just use that to kind of push in Try to let some of that air out. There we go. Get it extra low. That's gonna give us some cushion while we're riding. And it's also going to increase that surface patch, that contact patch, a little bit more support so we don't sink in this into the sand. It's gonna give us better grip during acceleration. And it's also going to help with steering, which is important. So one of the things with the motor this powerful, you know, you're 
you're starting off, if you really gun it, it can kind of it can kind of feel a little unstable. So you want a smooth and steady approach. There we go. We get the kickstand up. I'm gonna take it. Let's just start in pedal assist level three. It's pretty low. We got that 12 magnet sensor. It should kick on pretty quickly. There we go. This is level three out of nine. You know? Feels really good. It's nice and relaxed. <laughs> and this is pretty hard sand right here. This is, you know, you can see it's a little bit wet from those waves. So this is the most fun, you know, it really, it feels like you're just on this giant racetrack or something. Some really cool little obstacles. Just bump up over these, kind of go anywhere. Right along the cliff here, right back down, get close to the water. Look at this. Now I'm using that throttle up to like getting close to that 20 miles per hour mark. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can get up there even. Look at this, fantastic. just over there I mean it's it's awesome I'm on this like lava rock it's incredible I mean you know this isn't the only fat bike that could do this but that extra power is really helping from the motor just the big wheels I'm loving the suspension really appreciating that um, got the fun bell with the compass and stuff it's it's doing a great job now kind of go back let's find some soft stuff let's get into the more challenging terrain go just throttle in it no problem it's more like you know the speed I'm choosing is more based on how comfortable I feel than what this thing is capable of like I'm not going all the way I'm kind of smooth and steady and that's where this trigger throttle is really nice it's just it's variable speed if you do a little bit it only gives you a little bit of power and if you want a lot you can just juice it like this <laughs> oh man just explore all day but the steering thing is is the big question mark because if you oversteer the bike wants to keep going forward and you kind of I sort of tip on your side end up putting a foot down or something so it's it's really key I found to kind of brake and drag your back tire a little bit or just to slow down when you're coming into those um, tight turns <laughs> soft stuff right here soft terrain let's stay on the high road let's see what we can do oh yeah there we go look at this this is choppy soft handling it like a pro oh 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 this is a really soft stuff and we made it oh my gosh I mean if, if I was on a pedal power bike like even a fat bike I'd be dealing with like pushing really hard to keep that momentum because that gives you some stability and balancing. It's so nice to have that throttle to help you out in those moments of question. Whoosh. Got this fun wall. I love it, the tide comes in and it just cleans up all the tracks and you get this beautiful smooth tarmac. How are you doing, babe? I know, right? I think I might. This has been a fun ride and get out there and hop in the ocean. Well, that's pretty awesome. 
Uh, it's impressive to see just what these bikes can do in these, I, I, you know, inhospitable environments, right? Where there's like waves and sand and cactus and stuff. It's, it's neat that you can get out there and relatively quietly with a lot of power and, and decent speed, have some fun, get some exercise. Um, Volt bike, of course, they have the Yukon 750, and then they've got the Mariner over here. And this is my girlfriend Moni hanging out. Hello. And you're on this one because there's a little bit more clearance right yeah. here. The standover height is lower, but you're still getting really good power. It's another um, motor. It's like a 500 watt on this one, so a little bit weaker. I noticed that it, it creates a little bit more sound, but they've done a little bit of a seat post suspension and set it up so you can see the fenders and the rack. That's kind of what I was talking about where they have some options over here. So if you're going out for a day trip and maybe it's you and a friend or maybe you're just a shorter person and you want one that feels comfortable and folds this thing folds it gets really compact um this isn't and it's not bothering me at it's all. not it's not as wide yeah so some of the other folding ones um they fold like further forward and when you're pedaling it can get in your way um so this one's cool this one's 12.95 so a couple hundred dollars cheaper it's just neat to know that they offer both same thing 70 dollars shipping and I'm gonna review that one separately but we've had a chance to look at several fat bikes because this this trip was sponsored by Cabo Adventures and they're looking at using fat bikes to ride along the beach in a place like this. It's just an awesome experience. They're quiet, it doesn't impact the local sea life and you can still get around in a lot of places. And uh, I'll have all the specs back at the, the website, electricbikereview.com. Chime in if you've got this, you've got any other feedback and of course, ride safe.